a good win, uh, a complete win in all three phases, played well. But what we also face the sober reality is that there's we can get a lot better. Um, you know, looking through the tape, there's so many good things. Defense really played solid, um, played dominating football for three quarters, um, you know, and then in the last quarter, you know, gave up some stuff. You know, offense was the opposite of that. Started slow, but then finished strong. So there's a lot of room for improvement. I thought special teams did an excellent job. Um, you know, obviously we had the one turnover that we got to clean up, um, but a, a good win. But what we said was it's, it's the next step to getting better. That game was the next step to getting better. Um, no injuries to, re to report, nothing came up after the game. So, um, you know, looking forward uh, to this next week, Monday night against the Ravens, obviously another good football team. Uh, looking forward to that challenge. All right, Stephen Holder. Hey, Frank. Um, just uh, I'm wondering about something uh, just over the course of the last few weeks uh, without T.Y. in particular. How have, you, how have you seen your receivers perform? Uh, has it been consistent? Um, and what's the next step for that group, uh, particularly some of those young guys? I think they performed well. Uh, very happy with the development. You know, we each guy has a unique role that he plays. We try to spread the ball around. You know, Pitt has continued to, you know, make plays for us. We're happy about that. Zach is a, a nifty route runner and tough guy, can do all those things. Paris, you know, had a couple nice plays this last game. We need to continue, you know, to get him involved. To get, we're able to throw him a deep ball, you know, with his speed. Didn't connect on it, but came close. Um, Ashton, we have a lot of confidence in. He he stepped up big time, you know, in that uh, Carson stepped up in the pocket. That was a big time play. And then Mike Strawn, you know, we, we only got him a couple plays, but, you know, we're promising. And then to Michael, so a, a good young group. And I think they've stepped up in T.Y.'s absence. We miss T.Y. Um, he's he's our leader, but I think the guys have stepped up strong. And just real quick, follow, is, oh, just real quick follow, sorry, um, is, is there an update on T.Y.? Is he close, do you think, or closer? Closer, but yeah, closer, but not nothing worth reporting at this point. Okay. George Bremer. Coach, how much energy does it give the offense when Jonathan Taylor gets going the way he did on Sunday? And how much does that open up for the rest of the, for the play calling? Yeah, it, it gives us a lot of energy. Um, you know, the big explosive plays, uh, we get the run game going. It opens up the play action game even more so. Uh, and so he's just an electric guy with the ball in his hand. You know, he's got rare combination of speed and power and size. And, um, you know, the sooner we can get him going in a game, the better. But we'll continue to mix it up. You know, as you saw, we still got, you know, the other backs, some carries, Marlon, some carries, and, um, you know, Naheem, some carries. But it's nice to get Jonathan going. Mike Chappell. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's a nice lead in. It looks sort of a, not a problem, but an issue. Jonathan's going to be your, your, your feature guy. But when you give Marlon 10, and Naheem Hines too. Is is it a tough balance to where, boy, you want to get Naheem involved, but how do you balance that two and three guy? It's hard, and uh, so yeah, you're exactly right, Chap. Um, the plan this week was, you know, because we were down in the heat, was to spread the carries out a little bit more. You know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Marlon got a few more than normal, and uh, you know, and then he just got those four minute carries at the end of the game. You know, once you I think once you commit to a guy in a four minute situation, he's your guy um, for the most part. So Marlon was in there at the end for those four minute carries. That's when a lot, a lot of those carries stacked up. So when you put it in perspective like that, it was still a good mix. We'll continue to mix it up. It won't be, there's not, you're not gonna be able to, I don't think you're gonna be able to put your finger on a steady, uh, oh, this is the formula for mixing it up. I will tell you this, I think I've said this before, Chap, you know, really in my mind, the, the, the starting point is Jonathan with 20 carries, Naheem with five, and then Marlon with five, you know, and then, but there's give and take depending on how the game goes. Quick follow, a quick follow-up away from that. And you, you're normally pretty good about explaining why you did, why, what you did. Into the first half, you guys, what, you start your 18 and you, and you get down and you go for it fourth and one and you pick it up. 
with what a minute and something to go. And was it just a one shot to, to, to Paris? And then did you just plan on punting because you're getting the ball in the third quarter? Why go for it fourth and one if you're not going to be aggressive? Yeah, well, actually, I, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, you know, first of all, there, there was a split second where I was trying to decide what I, you know, was I really going to go for it on our own minus 27 or whatever it was. Um, and it just had a lot of confidence, in, you know, in the guys. But I thought, well, let's see if we can get a free five yards. We didn't draw them off sides. So it's just had another minute to think about it and then, you know, had a plan because I'm not going to go into the details of that plan, but some things happen personnel wise on their side of the ball. And I thought we got a chance to, we got a chance to do something here. So we really called two shots chap. We did call the one, uh, we did call the one to Paris down the side, but the one we threw a check down to Naheem and um, on that play, that play was designed to be a chunk play. And, and we did have somebody open, but we got flushed from the pocket a little bit early. Had we not gotten flushed, I think we would have had a 30-yard play, been in plus territory, and had plenty of time to score points. So the plan was to go for it on fourth down and then get the first down and be aggressive, right? I mean, we weren't, we weren't going for it just to run out the clock to the first half. We were going for it to try to get at least three points, and we just weren't able to hit on the two shots that we called. Thank you. JJ. That kind of leads into my question, Frank, with, with Carson and some of those shot plays, how, how have you seen his balance between taking what's there and maybe checking it down versus knowing when to be aggressive in those situations? Yeah. Um, JJ, I think that this week was his best yet. Um, I, I thought he, I thought he was right on the money all day. When I watched back, when I watched the film back a couple of times, he just had the right instinct on when to get it downfield, when to check it down. Um, what we talked about in our meeting and our quarterback meeting was, you know, he obviously made some nice chunk plays down the field, but there were three, four or five plays that he made that were three or four or five or six yard gains underneath that are important plays that keep us out of third and long. Um, he's getting the ball out of his hand, not trying to extend it, just taking that short stuff, but then still making chunk plays. That's the right mix that we're looking for. Chris Hagan. Hey, Frank, um, this deals with like the end of the halves and the end of games around the league. We're seeing more and more kickers attempt and make kicks even into the 60s. Do you does that get into your analytical brain when you think about, OK, we have a chance to score. But I mean, sometimes you leave 30 seconds on the clock. That's too much nowadays. There's no doubt, Chris. Um, all of that is fact. All that's factored into the charts, including the charts factor in who the other kicker is, who the other quarterback is, um, you know, how far can the other kicker make one from? What are the conditions that day? I mean, they're very sophisticated uh, charts, as we've said before, but at the same time, there's still that, there's still that gut feeling. You know, there was, we had another fourth down when we threw it one to Pitt. Uh, we, we had a third and 15 and threw a, an out route to Pittman and ended up with fourth, fourth and less than one. And I kind of had the green light to go for it. And for ever whatever reason, had a gut instinct to punt. That's the one that they fumbled, you know, and we got right back. So, you know, we got lucky that time and got one. It doesn't always work out like that. So you can't just go generically by the charts, but you use those as a tool. Stephen Holder. Sure. Hey, Frank, uh, we, we might have touched on this yesterday maybe, but uh, I think Carson through, through this point last season had like seven picks. I know years are all different, but – He's got the one fluky interception this year. Uh, how has he done well just in terms of decision-making, protecting the football? What, what has changed just generally from that perspective from what you see? I think he's just made very good decisions, you know, been very judicious, you know, very judicious, not only throwing the ball, but the other big emphasis, you know, from coming off of last year was, you know, ball security in the pocket. You know, and hey, we know every week that's a challenge. And this team that we're playing this week, they're they're good. At, they're this team that we're playing this week is really good at getting the ball out. So um, I, I give him a lot of credit. Uh, I give I give Carson a lot of credit. You know, keeping the ball secure in the pocket with two hands, and then making good decisions, still taking chances at times. You know, Scott Milanovic, the quarterback coach, has done a really good job with Carson in that regard. You know, just drilling him and 
working that in, into his mindset in every way. All right, last one, JJ. Frank, you, you mentioned Ashton Doolin earlier. Just what kind of player is he? What kind of person is he, you know, coming and making a couple plays on special teams and on offense this year? Love Ashton. Um, made a big deal about Ashton today, you know, in the team meeting. He's a player you can count on. Um, from day one with Ashton, I always felt like he was going to develop into a, a, a good wide receiver in this league. I think he's, he's doing that. Um, he's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's smart. And then what I probably like most about him is it's just, and I, I know this was most of the guys, but you know, Ashton came from a smaller school, but it's just, this game is not too big for him. There's no level of this game that is too big for Ashton. He can compete with anybody. I think he's still a young and growing receiver who has a lot of upside. Um, and he's very versatile as a receiver. You know, he can play any position. We put a lot of premium on that. Um, and then of course, he's such a dominant special teams player. And then he adds an element of toughness to that wide receiver room that you guys know we make a big deal about that. We got Zach, we got Pittman, you know, and then we got Ashton. When you talk about tough physical wide receivers, uh, you know, you'd be hard pressed finding a group of three receivers like that who are more physical and who aren't afraid to mix it up. So love the trajectory that Ashton is on. He's a very good football player, very good teammate. We're fortunate to have him.